السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا وإمامنا عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن عدة الشهور عند الله إثنا عشر شهرا إثنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم صدق الله العلي العظيم Honorable العلماء كرام My respected elders Brothers, mothers and sisters All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The cherisher, the nourisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector May the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah Be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My brothers, elders, mothers and sisters Firstly, I would like to enjoin upon all of you to adapt a life of taqwa for indeed in adopting a life of taqwa lies the success of this world and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that taqwa and may he grant us the opportunity to all connect in Jannatul Firdaus because of the taqwa that we attain in our lives insha'Allah ta'ala. Ameen. My brothers, elders, mothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we all know has blessed us with yet another beautiful yeah, I think this is 1442, 1442 years after Hijri uh, that we have, you know, got yet another beautiful year and this has been given to us only by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this has been given to us only to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala See, the past years we had so many brothers and sisters who were living with us and yet they were not able or they are not gifted enough with another year to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah has chosen us to be given yet another beautiful year to get close to him. And that is something that we need to be thankful to him insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Ameen. With that in mind, you know, people in the modern era often want to make resolutions at the end of the year, perhaps to embrace the new year with a lot of positivity, uh, that they, you know, make a few resolutions to bring change within themselves. And, you know, Islam, as we all know, is a faith that does not give regard to, you know, this new year customs. But yet, but yet, when it comes to change, when it comes to bringing in change within ourselves, there is no good or bad time to bring in change. Change needs to happen at any time. And you know, if it is now, change needs to be done now. So taking in that perspective, we need to understand that whether it's Nivea or not Nivea, change is always acceptable. Change, when it has to happen, you have to let it happen. Don't delay it. Don't delay it for tomorrow. Sometimes shaitan will come and tell you, you know, he can even come and tell you, you know, you're trying to make or bring about change within you when it's Nivea. You know, Nivea, you're not supposed to do anything of that sort. Shaitan can come and tell you that. But you know, the most or the wisest thing that you can do at that instance is to disobey shaitan and perhaps tell yourself that change can happen anytime. So that is why I say that, you know, people when they are about to make change during these days, you have to allow them to do so. It is okay for them to involve because our next minute is not guaranteed. We can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the very next minute. We don't know what will happen to our lives. What will happen if we pass away? Are we or can we go and tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, I did not change because... You know, I got an opportunity to change, but I did not change because it was New Year. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. So it's important for us to, you know, if we get the idea or the courage or the confidence to change, 
use this opportunity to change because no time is bad for change. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact grant us the opportunity to use this opportunity of, you know, perhaps you can call it a Nivea, but may He give us the opportunity to make the best use of this time to seek His pleasure, insha'Allah ta'ala. My brothers, elders, mothers and sisters, it was a prophetic tradition and perhaps the Sahaba radwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in all of them, when they used to enter a new month or a new week or a new year, what they used to do is they used to make a lot of dua. Because the past year could have been, you know, there could have been a lot of struggles, challenges and hardships, you know. And you need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes the year to come quite exceptional, beautiful. And, you know, that he makes this year full of excellence. And you know Abdullah ibn Hisham radiallahu an, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala alayhim ajma'in they used to make this dua, very powerful dua. And they used to make this dua as if, you know, and they used to memorize this dua perhaps as if they used to memorize the Quran. Like how they used to memorize the Quran, they used to make, you know, they used to memorize this dua. What is the dua? The dua is Allahumma duhilhu alayna bil amni wal iman wa salamata wal islam wa ridwanin min ar rahman wa jawazin min ash shaytan Subhanallah So the dua is that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter or for us to be given the opportunity to enter this new year or new month or new week with um, with safety. Safety is something very important for all of us. Bil amni wal iman. And iman. Iman is also very important. Belief in Allah. Ya Allah, give us the opportunity to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in you as we enter this new year, new week or month. Was salamati wal islam. And grant us the opportunity to be, you know, peaceful. Have afia in our lives. And, you know, grant us the opportunity to be in Islam in the new term, in the new tenure that we are about to face. وَرِضْوَانٍ مِّنَ Rahman And grant us the pleasure of the Almighty in the new time that we are going to face. So this is the dua that, you know, the Sahaba, Rizwanullahi Ta'ala, alayhi majma'in, they used to make upon entering a new season. And this is the dua that we all need to do, insha'Allah Ta'ala. Allahumma dukhilhu alayna bil amni wal iman. وَالسَّلَامَةِ وَالْإِسْلَامِ وَرِضْوَانٍ مِّنَ الرَّحْمَانِ وَجَوَازٍ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to memorize this dua and read this dua perhaps a little bit more often uh, as we enter this new year insha'Allah ta'ala. My brothers, elders, mothers and sisters, as we enter this new year, the first month that we are to explore is very special in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see the ayah that I recited to you in the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the months uh, in the Islamic calendar, in the Hijri calendar. And he says that there are 12 months in the Hijri calendar, just as how we have 12 months in the Gregorian calendar. And then he says in the end, Minha arba'atum hurum. In it is four months which are precious, which are noble in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of those months is the month of Muharram. Right? According to some of the ulama, this month stands out to be the best month after the month of Ramadan. While according to some other ulama, great scholars, they also state that this month is not the greatest perhaps after the month of Ramadan. Dhul Hijjah is the most, uh, I mean, the better month than the month of Muharram. So we need to understand that whether you follow what, whatever opinion, we need to understand that this month stands out to be a great month in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nevertheless, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to make the best use of it. I mean, and we have to understand that this is the mercy of Allah. This is the mercy of Allah. Nothing but the mercy of Allah that he keeps giving us opportunities despite our shortcomings. We were blessed with the month of Ramadan. We were blessed with the month of Ramadan. And then perhaps if you had failed, Allah blessed us with Dhul Hijjah. 
to make the best use of it and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you make the best use of arafah you will be forgiven your sins the previous year and the year to come will be forgiven and then perhaps if you have missed that also allah has gifted us with another opportunity that is the opportunity of muharram and likewise allah keeps on giving us opportunities just like how you would go to a shop and you will have seasonal sales to make use of allah keeps gifting us months days weeks sacred noble days in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know forgives people abundantly gives us a lot of rewards virtuous months and these are given out of the sheer mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing but his mercy may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding as we have started this month and we are about to you know finish the first 10 days uh, of the month of muharram we also need to understand that we are about to face one of the best days in the year for a muslim and what is that day the day of ashura the 10th day of muharram the 10th day of muharram and this day in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds a very special position and there is a lot of virtues attributed to this day that we muslims must be really aware of to make the best use insha allah ta'ala my brothers elders mothers and sisters let me give you some context to this so speaking of what ashura is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we all know that he migrated to medina he migrated to medina when he migrated to medina he found out that the jews they were fasting on the 10th day of muharram now remember that they were fasting on the 10th day of muharram according to the lunar calendar remember this fact perhaps i'll narrate to you why it's important a bit later inshallah ta'ala and they were fasting and when he saw the the yahud the jews fasting he asked them oh yahud why are you fasting why are you fasting ma hada ma hada and the jews responded by saying hada yawmun salih hada yawmun right najja allah bani israil min aduwihim they said the yahud said this is the day allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the banu israil the children of israel the people of musa alayhi salatu wassalam from their enemy who firaun and his army and he said perhaps they said that this is the day in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed firaun and his army allah also protected musa alayhi salatu wassalam you know that incident we know when musa alayhi salatu wassalam was put into a you know A, a, a plank a wooden plank and then sent in the river right when the mother of musa alayhi salatu wasalam had no way to protect musa alayhi salatu wasalam whatsoever he had no way she, perhaps she had no way to protect musa alayhi salatu wasalam what she did was you know the incident when firaun pledged promised to kill all the children because an astrologer told that you know the children of israel the banu israel one of them would come to destroy the kingdom of firaun so when firaun heard of this he wanted to kill all the children so what happened the mother of musa alayhi salatu wasalam did not have any way out but to obey the commandment of allah when allah told her that look the only way out for you right now is to put your child on a wooden plank or a basket and you know allow it to go in the river nile subhanallah that incident took place on the 10th of muharram so uh, the jews told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah this incident happened in the time Or on the 10th of muharram musa alayhi salatu wasalam who the jews believed in he used to fast on the 10th of muharram out of gratitude for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of gratitude for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and that is why we also follow that tradition and you know thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this help that he granted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa upon hearing this he said فَأَنَا أَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ He said I have more right upon Musa alayhi salatu wasalam than you the Jews and he instructed the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam to fast on that day as well so why fast on this day? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about what happened to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam so the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give us by allowing us to fast on this day is the fact that you know when you obey Allah when things don't make sense to you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you flourish by allowing his successes to come to you and you know when you don't obey him when you disobey him right and when you don't follow his commandments his instructions what will happen is no matter how strong you are no matter who you have besides you around you Allah will cause you to fail Allah will cause you to fail this is the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to adhere to take into our hearts as we enter a brand new year because this message is very important and it has to be something that is embedded within our minds as we face the entire year because we do not know what is I mean what we are to expect in this year and for that a lot of faith in Allah is essential the first principle that we need to get into our hearts to establish that Iman that is required is to build faith in Allah in troubled times that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had in his life so we need that taqwa, we need that faith in Allah that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his family had at that time and we need to you know seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from you know the, the arrogance, the pride, the disobedience that Fir'aun had and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to remind us of this and that is why he perhaps reminds us of this through this day called Ashura so the Prophet wasallam commanded, instructed the companions to fast on this day. He told that this day, if you fast on this day, you kafiru sanat al that it will forgive your past year's sins for you. Perhaps if you knew when you fast the day of Arafah, the sins of your past year, the sins of your future year to come will be forgiven. And since then if you had done you know a few sins you know your small sins which weren't forgiven when you fasted on the day of Arafah they will all be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you fast on this day and that was the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to be forgiven Ameen my brothers elders mothers and sisters the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to fast every single year and it was almost compulsory for the Muslims to fast uh, on the day of Ashura from the times of you know the early stages of Islam perhaps and then and then you know when Ramadan was introduced when Ramadan was introduced the Prophet وسلم, made it optional for the Muslims to fast but yet he وسلم, made it a point that he fasted every single year on the day of Ashura may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding acceptance and then the year before the Prophet وسلم, passed away he was informed you know the Sahaba majma'in, they asked him about the day of Ashura and fasting on the day of Ashura and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told them about fasting on this day and then the Sahaba radhanallahu ta'ala alayhi majma'in asked a question Ya Rasulullah, you know if you fast on this day are we following the Jews and the Christians because the Jews and the Christians also fast on this day the same way we are fasting doesn't it look like we are following their culture, their, you know, their habits the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said O oh, Sahaba then what you need to do is you need to fast the day 
prior to the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram as well, that is the 9th of Muharram. So you need to fast on two days, the 9th of Muharram and the 10th of Muharram. So for us in Sri Lanka, it's tomorrow and the day after. Tomorrow and the day after that we need to fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept a lot of virtues on this day. May He grant us the opportunity to make the best use of this day. Ameen. So it is recommended for all of us to fast. Make use of this day. We will never get this opportunity uh, always, you know. We never know when we will get this opportunity to fast on the day of Ashura. Because Allah can take our lives away anytime. Allah can take our lives away. What if He takes our lives away before we are able to meet the next Ashura? Before we are able to meet Ramadan, perhaps to make proper Tawbah? That we have guarantee that Allah will forgive us. Right? We do not know. Allah can take our lives the next minute. I do not have guarantee that I will finish this lecture. We need to think about the fragility of life. And death comes unannounced. Thinking of all these circumstances, I think we will be real losers if we don't make use of the opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps giving us. Just like how I told you, when seasonal sales come, you know, we feel regretful when we don't make use of that sale afterwards. Likewise, if we don't make use of these days, Wallahi, a day will come in the day of Qiyamah. When Allah will announce our deeds, we will regret. We will regret because we did not make use of you know, the days we are gifted with. Well, there will be some fortunate ones who will make the best use of these days and they will be like over the moon, Wallahi, those days. If we want to flourish and cherish those days, Make use of these days, insha'Allah ta'ala, to fast. It's a small thing to do. Today, Wallahi, in the comfort of our homes, in the comfort of our lives today, fasting for 12 hours does not take a lot of effort. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to fast just as how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam fasted on this day. I mean, so what if you're not able to fast on both days? You're able to fast on one day. What are you supposed to do? There is a confusion in the community. And sometimes people often opt not to fast on the 10th day of Muharram because they are not able to fast on both days. Mawlana Manzur Ahmad Nu'amani, one of the great scholars of the past, he has written on his books that, you know, it's okay to fast only on the 10th day of Muharram. In the modern world, in today's world, because the Jews, they don't fast on the 10th day of Muharram according to the lunar calendar these days. They don't fast that way. You know, they have shifted to the Gregorian calendar and they have specified a date of their own, right? According to the Gregorian calendar, which signifies this day and they fast on that day, not on the 10th day of Muharram according to the lunar calendar. So the Jews don't do that anymore, right? Because of the absence of the reasoning of why the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to fast on the ninth day of Muharram as well, because of the absence of that reasoning, the ulama, some of the ulama have spoken to us and told us that, you know, you can fast only on the tenth day of Muharram as well. But however, in obedience to the words of the Prophet ﷺ, it's always recommended for us to fast on the 9th and the 10th day of Muharram. If you're not able to fast on the 9th day of Muharram, there's no problem. You can fast on the 11th day of Muharram, insha'Allah ta'ala. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ told this the year prior to the demise of the Prophet ﷺ, he did not live the next year when he was to face Ashura, uh, in which he said that he will fast the ninth day of Muharram as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding, acceptance. I mean, another thing that I would like to address, a, a recommended deed, that you know, some people by culture practice,
that we also can do insha'Allah ta'ala in our lives. And I think it's a forgotten sunnah. People in the old times, they used to do this. And that is, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to a narration, he said that, مَنْ وَسَّعَ عَلَىٰ عِيَالِهِ يَوْمَ عَاشُرَىٰ لَمْ يَزَلْ فِي سَعَةِ سَائِرِ سَنَتِهِ Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a narration, he said that, you know, a person who is generous to his family, listen to this carefully, a very powerful narration. He said, a person who is generous to his family on the day of Ashura, Allah expands, Allah extends his sustenance for his entire year. The, the year that we are about to face, Allah extends, expands his sustenance. Right? Subhanallah. This is a very powerful narration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, used to instruct his companions to, you know, be generous, to be generous, more than how they used to be generous in the other days, on the day of Ashura, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will extend his sustenance. So we need to understand that, you know, a good deed on this day is to be very generous to the family members, to our extended relatives on this day. But see, certain cultures, certain people in the community, what they have done is, they have made it very precise that they will offer a specific kind of food to their families every year on this day. You know, in SL, in Sri Lanka, we have this uh, you know, habit of, you know, giving yellow rice and a certain, you know, limited number of curries that we pass along to our family members. It has become almost a tradition. What we need to understand is it's a good thing to do that, but yet it's advised not to limit just to food of a specific kind. Because, you know, we have to understand that when you talk about generosity, it's not just limited to food. You can give out clothes. You can take your family out. You can be very generous to the family in other means. You can go out on a holiday with your family members. All these deeds can be done. All these deeds can be done. Why limit it to just food? The problem with that is when you limit it to just food, what is going to happen is, you know, later on, the generations to come, when you do it for a few years, it almost becomes a tradition. And when it becomes a tradition, the entire act of that deed of specifically giving that kind of food also becomes a part of the sunnah. That is not intended. That is not intended. What is intended is to be generous to the family. And you can be generous in all ways. And that should be clearly, explicitly said. Perhaps you may be generous to your family members. In different ways, you may take, you know, this year you may take your family out on a holiday. Next year you may feed your extended relatives with food. The year after, you may even gift your family members with clothes. Likewise, you can be generous to your family members in different ways. My brothers, elders, mothers and sisters, this wus'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to all those people who, you know, are very generous to their family members on the day of Ashura. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimahullah, one of the great giants of the past, he has written a lot of books. Uh, he has been a very famous cleric in history on Islamic sciences. And he has written on one of his books that he, you know, used to practice this narration for over 50 years. For over 50 years and he has seen nothing but excellence in these years he has seen nothing but excellence in these years what we need to understand is see the deed of you know feeding family members or being generous to your family members on the day of ashura is a very small deed a very small one but yet See the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perhaps to his believers that he extends, that he gives an abundant reward. That he extends our sustenance for the entire year to come. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to appreciate. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So three things I reminded you of today. Number one, fast on this day. As if you fast, Allah will forgive the sins of the past year. Number two, feed your family members. Be generous to your family members. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also promises you to extend your sustenance for the year to come. Insha'Allah ta'ala. So these are two guidance, advices the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave us in relation to the day of uh, Ashura, the 10th day of Muharram. One more thing I would like to remind you of is the fact that, see, this day, though it's a very good day that we need to commemorate in history, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes, it was a very good day, a very auspicious day. But yet, after the demise of the Prophet wasallam, this day also turns out to become one of the darkest days in history. People often don't remind about this dark side of the 10th day of Muharram. This day, we need to understand the 10th day of Muharram. Scholars write, there has never been a darker day than this day because Hussein radiallahu anhu the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and many other family members of his were martyred on this day. The ulama write that there has never been a dark day in history like this and there will never be a dark day like this in the times to come. Because that was the day that people, our very own Muslim brothers, for political reasons, they waged war, they took swords, they waged war against the family of the Prophet ﷺ. There was a dispute, yes, but that dispute should have not extended towards, you know, waging war with the family of the Prophet ﷺ. Some of the ulama have spoken about this as well. And hence, this day remains to be a day of mixed emotions. The 10th day of Muharram remains a day full of mixed emotions. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day that he blesses the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he blesses them. And you know, what is really sad also about this day is the fact that the demise of the children, the family of the Prophet ﷺ aside, the Muslims were officially broken. They were divided into Sunnis and Shias. So as much as you know, this day has a lot of virtue, there is also a dark side to this day which we need to regret which we need to worry for and we need to ask Allah that Allah never ever in the history of our days to come I mean in the days to come inshaAllah ta'ala that he never allows a similar incident to take place a dark day may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us may he make us righteous servants of his May, may he make us people who make the best use of Ashura. May he make us people who are forgiven. May he accept our deeds in the years to come. May he make the year to come a year full of barakah, blessings, mercy. May he accept us all. May he unite us in the gardens of paradise. Just as how he united us this wonderful afternoon. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين